All right, guys, I got a really interesting lock here. This is quite old. This is from Leif in Sweden. He sent along a little bit of information with this thing. He said it was originally designed by a guy named Christopher Poolham, and these locks were made from the early 1700s through the 1900s. They call this the Swiss security lock here in the United States. I have never seen one. This is completely new to me. Um, this one is a hinged shackle, and you can see a pin right here, and it opens. I'll show you how it works in just a moment, uh, because I have a key. Anyway, I'll open it up, and you can take a look at it. But uh, the hinge shackle was made probably from the eight, in the 1800s. So no idea of the exact date on this thing, but that's everything I know, or actually everything Leif knows. Um, when you take a look at the keyway, huge, huge keyway. And when you look inside of there, you can see a whole bunch of disks. Yeah, and this is not the key, um, This is, but it is a cool key. Try getting that thing through security. Anyway, I thought it was cool, decided to show it off, but the real key is right here. And when you look at this guy, I think you can see very quickly that this is a lot like the abloy. You can see um, the cuts here is a cut. There's one there, and then in between, I guess those are grooves or possibly wards inside of this lock. So you have what appear to be five different, uh, probably five different discs with three different cuts, it appears. Uh, it works beautifully despite being so old. Slides in there, rotates. Now this is the interesting part. When you turn it and pull out the shackle, you'll notice, remember I counted five cuts? Well, there you go. There's five different grooves in here. And when you look inside of here, and I'll try to hold the flashlight, it's completely open now, but then when I rotate the key back, if it will cooperate, you notice that those wheels rotate back. So the wheels, or the discs, are actually the locking mechanism for that fit inside of these individual grooves. So very cool, very simple mechanism. Let me see if I can get this thing to cooperate, and we will lock it back up. All right, so got to figure out a way to pick this. I don't obviously can't use our favorite disc detainer pick because, well, <laughs> yeah, that's just not going to work. But I would like to use the mechanism. So what I'm going to do is take this piece of brass. Now, uh, we can't tension it from this. I'll have to tension it probably by pulling on the shackle. But what I need to do is get a piece of wire to go down dead center in the keyway. If I just take a piece of wire and try to fit it, it's going to be flopping all over the place in this huge keyway. So instead, I'm going to use our tool. It's kind of an alignment tool. To align it, I'm going to make a bit or a, a tip to fit into that uh, lock face. And then we'll also keep our wire perfectly centered in that keyway as I try to pick this thing. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but let's give it a shot. All right, guys. Welcome to day three of this pool and lock. I, I have had no luck with this. I've had several different attempts. I'd like you to walk through them. And attempts is another way of saying failure. So... Uh, if you recall, what I wanted to do first is I wanted to use this pick and I was going to create a new tip. And, and that was the first attempt. Uh, if you take a look at this guy, I basically machined a rectangle there. And that rectangle is the same size as the hole in the bottom of the keyway there. And it would fit in there like so. And because I'm not really tensioning on these two bars, so what I decided to do was use one of these ranger bands to go up around and then hold that. Uh, hold that arm and it would pull the, the pick into the lock and that would free up my hand to tension this. Um, but in experimenting, what I figured out real quick, I mean, it fits perfectly. I mean, this is just beautiful. Uh, but when I got to the very back, it seemed like the last three discs, I wasn't able to manipulate them. It was like I was hitting a, a steel wall or something. Couldn't figure it out. I ended up breaking, I think, three wires. I could manipulate the discs in the front, the two in the front, but when I got past disc two, it wasn't working at all. So I figured something wrong with this wire, something going on. This probably was not, because I was breaking these, I figured this is probably not the way to go. So I set him aside after hours and hours, and then I went with this guy. Now, this is a lot tougher than that wire. This is a piece of half-inch uh, drill rod, hardened steel took me forever to grind this down. It's ugly. It's really ugly. I get it. Same little manipulators. And as soon as I sized him and got him in there, I figured out real quick, he wasn't going all the way to the bottom. And I could not figure out what was going on. Uh, so I took a look at the key. 
Now, I showed you this key before, but one thing we didn't look at was this side. Now, there's a hole there, and there's only one thing that needs to go in a hole, and that's a shaft. So, I got some WD-40 and some brake cleaner, and I shot it down in there. And I, you can't believe the amount of goop I got out, out of this lock. And as soon as I cleaned all the goop, I was able to see that there is indeed a prong. It's almost like a tack head down in the bottom of there that fits into this hole. And I guess uh, Mr. Poulom decided that that was going to be a good anti-picking measure. And indeed it is. It worked great to keep out the typical pick. So I took my little, my new tool. I started trying to grind here and I very quickly realized it was going to weaken it too much. This just wasn't going to. It was dinner anytime, dinner time anyway. So I threw him aside, gave it up. And this morning came out and decided to make a third attempt. And that would be this guy. Uh, out of aluminum, uh, same style and everything, got the same dimensions as the hole on the bottom of there, except I drilled a, a hole down the center of the shaft there to accommodate that, that prong in the back. Hopefully this one will work. I got a couple of marks here, so I know which way the tip of that is going to be oriented. Again, the, the trouble is going to be demonstrating this for you guys, if it even works. Um, if I were to tension this, there's a couple of ways to tension it. Normally, this would be on a shackle or a chain, and I would simply grab it and really pull it hard to put tension on the shackle, which would then bind up, hopefully, the discs. And then I could take the pick and stick it in there. But you guys wouldn't be able to see anything. Uh, another possible way would be to hold it something like this and push with my fingers and pull with that center one. And, yeah, still... I end up obscuring a little bit and quite honestly, it's not very comfortable. So I've got to figure out something else so that I can pick it or at least try to pick it. And you guys can see, you can't, I can't describe my feedback to you, but if you can see the feedback, hopefully with the widening of this gap right here, that would be a better deal for both of us. All right. So let me figure out how to do that. And we're going to try out this new tool this morning. All right, guys, now it's late afternoon. I've had several failures on this guy with this tool. It kind of seems to be working, but not quite. Still still locked, still works. Haven't broken it yet. Um, I'm having trouble, even with this tool, I had to make a couple modifications. One, I had to round this thing off kind of like a football. I kept getting the pick stuck. And one time it took me an hour and a half to get the pick out of there, slowly but surely. Finally got it out, then I decided to reshape it. That way, when the discs are turned, this pick will still fit corner to corner in the shorter slot. So anyway, um, it's working as I thought in terms of the, the tensioning. If you'll watch this seam right here, especially on this first couple of discs, when I slide them in, if I can find it, I'm going to use my thumb as kind of a guide because I've really got to keep that pick centered as best as I can. Okay, find the tent, find the disc, get them lined up, and notice how that gap widened just a little bit. Okay, just popped a little more, and there we go. Come out of there. All right, guys. Based on the time and all the specialized tools, I'm going to not call this a success. This just took so many attempts, so many different tools, and I'm amazed of the level of security provided by this old lock originally designed in the 1700s. And even today, you know, 300 years later, I'm still having trouble with this design, despite having modern technology to make some pretty specialized tools that will only work with that lock. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe, stay legal, safe. Thank you for the lock. Kept me busy and kept me entertained during this coronavirus lockdown. Thanks, guys.